All right. Well, you guys are in luck because I'm going to talk about something amazing. It's called uh, feline idiopathic cystitis. And the best way I can summarize it is it's the mystery of the bloody urine. Sounds like a children's book going wrong. <laughs> so anyways, FIC, which I'm going to refer to as the rest of the presentation, feline idiopathic cystitis, basically what is it? It's a condition that's not fully understood, and that's where the idiopathic comes from, because it's the hall, and it's hallmarked by bladder ulcerations which lead to pain in bloody urine. This is a diagnosis of exclusion, which means that we basically have to eliminate a whole lot of other possible diagnoses before we arrive on this. Uh, it's a big pain because there's not one specific test that we can rely on for it. We just have to go through the steps of eliminating all the possible causes before getting to it. Uh, some of the things that we always rule out, first and foremost, is ruling out that pesky UTI. Uh, I will say in cats that are around between 1 and 10 years old, it's pretty rare for them to have a urinary tract infection, especially male cats. Once you start getting into the older cats, cats that have diabetes, kidney failure, that becomes a much higher differential. Um, for ruling those out, we do urinalysis, uh, pretty basic in the clinic, and uh, if we have any questions about that, we send it out to the lab to have a culture. Uh, the other thing that we rule out is bladder stones. Um, that's a little bit lower on our differential list, but for that, uh, if we suspect it, we'll do some x-rays um, or potentially send you out for an ultrasound. Um, and uh, last but not least, bladder or cancer of the urethra. Uh, in cats that are extremely old, if we're seeing certain changes on the urinalysis, that may be uh, something that we may go after, and that's ruled out uh, x-rays or ultrasound or even on urinalysis, we can pick that up, some signs of it. So what causes it, and this is where it gets a little hairy, so hang in with me. Uh, the short answer is we don't know. Um, there's a lot of research that's going into it, lots of dollars, still don't know. But what appears to be surfacing is that it's a intricate connection uh, between several different systems of the body, including the nervous, the endocrine, and the urinary systems. Um, and uh, there's a chart up here, I don't want you to get too scared by it, um, and I'll go over that in a second. Uh, cats with uh, idiopathic cystitis have been shown to have an increase of a neural enzyme up here in the brain, and uh, basically they don't handle they don't cope with stress as well. We all know somebody, and maybe you or me, that doesn't handle stress very well and is prone to anxiety from changes like that. Um, this enzyme is involved in the stimulation of the fight or flight system in your body, so you get that rush of adrenaline, and that's what these cats are feeling. Yeah, and that's basically what I just said. The uh, upregulation of this system causes that fight or flight feeling and the release of uh, uh, these little hormones like epinephrine, which is basically from the adrenal glands. Um, cats with idiopathic cystitis have also been shown to uh, interestingly have smaller adrenal glands. And that's interesting because when stress hits the brain, um, it travels down this pathway and goes all the way to the adrenal glands, uh, which sit right next to your kidneys. Those adrenal glands release a steroid, which actually t shuts off this side of the system that's ramping up the body. So these cats don't have this step right here, which tells the body to just relax. And it, and it becomes a vicious cycle where the cat keeps going through it. And these, these stress hormones in the body just travel all throughout, and uh, obviously there's a lot of blood vessels in the bladder, so it makes its way to the bladder. Once, once it hits the bladder, it goes down and activates a couple different things. Um, it, can, it, it goes to the smooth muscle around the bladder, causes some cramping, some contractions, which can be painful, and uh, also causes release of uh, <coughs> certain, um, certain materials out of the bloodstream which leads to little hemorrhages or like little areas of bruising and bleeding on the inside of the bladder. Um, interestingly enough, the stress hormones can actually cause little defects in the bladder wall which allow urine to uh, sort of penetrate into the bladder wall. Um, I don't know if you've ever gotten, if you've ever been at the ocean and you've had a cut, you realize where the cut is pretty soon once you're in that salty water because 
it stings, and that's basically what's going on with the urine. The urine's exposed, is getting through uh, that protective layer, and it's getting into all those nerves, and it, it's pretty painful for these guys. And uh, didn't show up too well on here, but this is uh, uh, where they pass the scope right up the urethra right to the bladder. And uh, these are all little bruises and hemorrhages on the surface of the bladder. The bladder wall's looking pretty angry there. So as you can imagine, it can be pretty painful. Um, there's also a protective layer on the inside surface of the bladder wall. It's almost like a slime that protects it against some of the urine. And that's also been shown to be decreased in cats with idiopathic cystitis.